side by my newest character on Essence League. What I've created is a pure elemental RT static strike berserker. You hear elemental and RT and you might assume that uh, you end up with a character with low damage and little to, to no end game viability, but using several mechanics this character achieves a fairly high amount of damage. The mechanics that this build use are near maximized reduced skill effect duration and large amounts of elemental penetration. On a skill like Static Strike or Earthquake or Storm Call, all having a base skill effect duration before their uh, damage occurs, all of them can be reduced and that uh, dead time between damage can be reduced as well, allowing to push out more consistent constant damage. Static Strike has the lowest duration of all the duration skills like that. Uh, this means that you could attack most frequently with Static Strike given all of the duration possible. Uh, in this case, you can uh, proc the explosion uh, at least seven times per second uh, with my current setup, which is slightly below maximum. This is achieved uh, through three pieces of gear. Uh, one being a uh, max roll labyrinth enchanted helmet, which reduces static strike duration by 45%. Um, a warp timepiece, which reduces it by another 12%, and a 20-20 uh, reduced skill for, or less skill effect duration support gem. Synchronizing the seven shock waves per second and seven attacks per second allows me to add the damage together of the two hits, uh, resulting in a skill that basically hits for 220% of base damage, uh, higher than any other skill in the game. If you don't understand what I mean by 220% of base damage, I mean that the base attack damage on the actual skill gem of Static Strike is 160%, but the shockwaves do 40% less, meaning they do 60% of your base damage. Because the hits are always synchronized, both hit at the exact same time and result in a 220 damage base skill. The other mechanic utilized, the large amount of elemental penetration, is achieved firstly by converting all of our damage to cold so that we can mainly focus on penetrating with just one resistance which allows us to stack much more on the tree in, in general. Being cold based allows us to take fangs of frost and forces of nature giving us 14% of elemental penetration. We also use a cold penetration gem in our setup giving us 37% and additionally we also run a low level cast one damage taken frost bomb which lowers enemy resistances by 20% additionally. This means that we have 71% uh, of cold damage penetration constantly, even on a hexproof map. But additionally, on non hexproof maps and bosses, you can run Frostbite and Elemental Weakness. These two curses, uh, with maximum levels and an equality curse on hit setup, give us up to a potential 91% additional elemental penetration on non curse resistant bosses. Total together, it's 162% cold damage penetration, uh, potentially, which is a massive damage boost. Reduced elemental damage results in a more multiplier to damage for each percentage below zero. Most mobs will only have up to 40% uh, cold resistance, even on the boss level and the guardian level. They all have roughly 40%, I believe, uh, meaning that for the most part, we are almost always doing at least 100% more damage than what our base is. This character relies on two things to keep itself alive defensively. Uh, one is the leech from the Berserk Ascendancy, the other thing being block, uh, which is picked up on the tree, and the shield, which is used as Aegis Aurora, so it uh, refreshes our 500 energy shield uh, buffer pool pretty often. Unbuffed, I sit at 54% block chance in town. However, when using Rumi's Flask, I go up to max block and get another 15% spell block. Additionally, Rainbow Strides are used to convert some of our block chance to spell block. Uh, with Rumi's Flask up, we sit at 32% block chance. However, that could be further increased if you were to use the Reckless Defense Jewels. However, the increased crit chance is a sacrifice. Other than that, the only other defensive setups that the build has is an Immortal Call setup on cast with damage taken. I also reserve 25% uh, of my mana with Arctic Armor, and I have a Fortify setup on my Shield Charge, which I use pretty often. 
On the side of damage, the build runs a Herald of Thunder and a Wrath uh, for flat lightning damage, um, which all factors into the static strike as well. Uh, but mainly for damage, the build uses a Toriani's Catalyst, a high elemental roll, and a high physical roll because the conversion from Static Strike gives you a large amount of lightning damage as well, um, which is just as effective as any other flat amount of lightning damage. Just uh, It is also increased by your strength and your uh, the small amount of physical damage I pick up on the tree by Marauder. Um, so that all increases the base physical damage, which is then converted at 60% to lightning, which all uh, is converted to cold, and then is uh, increased by all my other uh, modifiers on the tree. One of the biggest sources on the tree for uh, my cold damage scaling is a cold steel jewel placed in the jewel socket by Golem's Blood, which affects all of the shield uh, physical damage, though it's converting all of the physical increases to cold damage increases, giving me over a uh, hundred percent increased uh, cold damage from that jewel socket alone. Aside from that I pick up uh, the heavy elemental damage nodes by Ranger and then mostly by Templar uh, to further increase the amount of weapon elemental damage. Additionally I have weapon elemental damage on pieces of gear where I can fit it. For my six link skill setup I run weapon elemental damage Cold Penetration, Multi-Strike, Reduced Duration, and Area of Effect, along with Static Strike. For Single Target, I run Elemental Focus instead of Area of Effect. Additionally, Physical to Lightning is a very good support gem for this build, however, I do not have a slot for it, otherwise I would be running it. It is much higher tooltip damage in the space of Cold Penetration, but I believe Cold Penetration is uh, more damage overall with the penetration, uh, more multiplier, it's just not on your tooltip. Now that I've gotten all the uh, stats and gear out of the way, I wanted to just talk about a little bit of the uh, what the character has done and you know how it feels and how, how the build functions in general. Uh, for the most part, it works really, really well up until tier 14 plus maps. That's when it starts to get a little more sketchy. The, uh, the main problem this build has is its life pool. The uh, the amount of uniques required in taking both ring slots and neck and shield and boots to uh, to actually make the build work uh, really eats up a ton of life and makes the character squishy despite having a huge amount of life on the tree. That being said, uh, for what it is, I, I think it's done really really well. I've completed all four guardians with this character um and i've attempted the shaper uh, uh, however i won't lie to you guys most of the uh, guardian maps were really easy i ran two of them white um i will never take this character into chimera again because uh melee name lock skills versus the ads in that fight is probably the worst thing i've ever done in this game uh all the other fights were not too bad um Phoenix was easier than I expected with this character. Uh, Hydra was probably the easiest for the character. Uh, Minotaur wasn't too bad, um, but the uh, the heavy hits you would sometimes get a little sketchy. Um, but for the most part, uh, I feel like if I knew the fight a little bit better, it would be less scary and could be done consistently. However, if you put damage mods and stuff on any of those guardians, uh, they definitely become much less uh, stable maps for this character to run. As far as the, the Shaper run goes, yeah, uh, that was my first time in Shaper. I figure I would try it out after completing the achievement doing all four maps on this guy. I figured I might as well use the fragments myself rather than sell them. So I went in there and, uh, do I tried, yeah, I tried. <laughs> That's all I could say. Um, I got him to half health on his first phase before using all the portals. Um, I ate a bunch of slams, I, you know, ate a laser, ate some balls, and... But overall, uh, going in there, the, the thing that I was probably most proud of with the build is that I actually was able to do damage to him. Like, I wasn't just, you know, hitting a brick wall with non-crit damage, uh, with this guy. Um, he started a little bit on trash because the AoE damage isn't nearly as high as his single target. Uh, it's just the way the skill works, but, uh, he, he did kill them. Uh, I'm not sure if it was quick enough to really save Xana, though, but he was killing them. Uh, overall, though, he, 
you know, once I actually, like, was able to do a bit of damage after I stopped dying constantly, uh, he burned them down fairly quickly, a lot faster than I expected. Um, I think for the, the most part, though, the at least, you know, being able to face that damage wall is a great proof of concept for the character. Um, I'm not sure if it's, you know, it's optimal. It, it probably isn't. I mean, I'm using two Call of the Brotherhoods to convert into all sorts of weird shit, but... Yeah, you know, what, what can you expect from a, a hipster build, really?